I am radioactive. I'm breaking in. Thank you so much to Shudder for sponsoring this video. Guy. He pulls out his woody toy. Oh my god, cowboys are pretty badass. You know what's also cool? My dad's samurai sword. <laughs> now what if we put them together? And then made a movie about Nicolas Cage. Balls blown off. No! You guys might think that a Nicolas Cage movie where he acts insane and screams Just a cool! at the top of his lungs. Testicle! Sounds fun, right? Because earlier in the movie, he had his nuts blown off. That sounds like a great watch. And not only that, the trailer was awesome. I wasn't entirely sure what the movie was about, but it looked fun, it looked really cool. And then I watched it and almost fell asleep multiple times. <laughs> yes, today we're talking about Prisoners of the Ghost Land. This movie was directed by one Scion Sono. I probably mispronounced that. I haven't seen any of his other work, but if they're anything like this movie, then I'm not interested. Now, I know I've said on Twitter, I'm going to try and be more positive in my reviews, and I'm going to try, but I'm also not going to lie to you. <laughs> You're going to have a better time with this movie if someone explains to you what happens in it than if you actually watch it, because it's very drawn out. It thinks it's more artsy than it is. And to be honest, it just doesn't make any goddamn sense. Half of the dialogue, this is what it sounds like. I know that looks bad, but I promise I'm not mimicking Japanese people. This movie is just filled with crazy people. Lots and lots of insane people. <laughs> Nicolas Cage said somewhere that this was his craziest movie yet, and I was like, what? How is that possible? Have you seen Mom and Dad? Have you seen Vampire's Kiss? It just didn't seem plausible. I mean, he was right. I fucking know! I fucking know! But the movie's bad, so... <laughs> Aesthetically, this movie kicks ass. The opening scene is in an all-white bank, filled with customers all wearing different bright colors. There's also a child near a gumball machine. I'm guessing the gumballs symbolize order and structure of the people within this town. And Nicolas Cage robs the bank. In his first scene, he goes ballistic. It's pretty great. Nick turns to see that his partner is aiming a gun at a child and he tries to stop him. The gun goes off and then the security guards start firing at them and a firefight breaks out. The gumballs are flying everywhere. It's a pretty cool scene. I was invested, okay? When I saw this, I was like, hell yeah, this is gonna be great. Uh, yeah. And don't get me wrong, this movie is filled with really cool visuals. Aesthetically, it's awesome. But I think my praise stops there. We're then shown a traditional Japanese village. This place is called Samurai Town, and there's some women escaping. Later, one of these women wake up to find that she's in a post-apocalyptic looking encampment, effectively swapping one prison for another. So she screams, no, I'm not a prisoner! Nicolas Cage in this movie is literally just called Hero. After this attempted robbery, we fast forward many years and Nicolas Cage is being held captive by a bunch of Japanese cowboys. This movie has a very cool feudal Japan slash Wild West crossover aesthetic going on. I like this a lot because you don't see it very often. So then Nicolas Cage is brought out wearing nothing but a sumo wrestler Mawashi. An onlooking woman asks him to show her his balls. Let me see your balls! Yes. <laughs> Nicolas Cage is presented to an elderly gentleman wearing all white, and he's called the governor. One of the women that escaped in the beginning of the movie is named Bernice, and she's the governor's granddaughter, and the governor wants her back. You guys know where this is going, right? Basically, he forces Nick Cage to bring her back to him. But to ensure that he does this, he's forced to wear an all leather black suit, and there's small explosives around his neck, balls, and arms. Before putting on the suit, Nick removes the hawashi and throws it at a group of women. One woman who is drawing him quickly takes the opportunity to draw his dick. <laughs> the townsfolk then start randomly singing a song while he's dressing himself. It comes out of nowhere and it's kind of goofy and hokey. I'm not sure if that's what this director was going for, if he wanted the movie to be kind of silly. If that was his goal, then he succeeded. So Nick gets into an altercation with one of the samurai guys. The people surrounding them start chanting. Oh, yeah. oh. 
So then Yasujiro, the governor's right-hand man, starts killing some of the samurai guys to like prove he's a badass or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> the governor chimes in and he's like, you better not mess with me, Nick, because apparently I let my men kill each other. <laughs> he then explains that Nick's suit is outfitted with neural sensors. The explosives at the neck will go off if Nick attempts to remove the suit. The explosives at the arms will go off if they sense he is about to strike a woman, whatever that means. And the explosives on his testicles, one at each testicule, will go off if he gets a boner, I guess. The governor doesn't want Nicolas Cage doing anything sexual with his granddaughter. I'm pretty positive Nicolas Cage would have to remove the suit in order to do anything with his penis. <laughs> Either that, or he would have to cut a hole in the suit. I'm assuming the neck explosives will go off if he tries to cut the suit off, you know, because that's trying to remove the suit, unless they only go off if he tries to remove the suit from the neck. They didn't explain it very well. And what if Nicolas Cage got morning wood, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's gonna have a rude awakening when his balls just blow off randomly. <laughs> So Nicolas Cage has three days to retrieve Bernice and there's a device on his suit sleeve and he's told that if Bernice speaks her name into the device, it'll give Nick two extra days to get back with her safely so he can get the suit removed. So they give Nick a car. He uses it to rip some donuts and then decides to take a bicycle instead. I'm not sure why, it was pretty hilarious but didn't make much sense. Maybe it's supposed to send a message to the governor like, ha. Hey, I don't care that I only have three days. I'm gonna take my sweet time. I don't care about this dumb suit. Nick Cage is just that cool, you know? He's so cool. The onlookers think he's a badass because of this, because of course they do. It's very confusing. So Yasujiro drives the car to Nick, who's on the bicycle, and Nick's like, all right, fine. I guess I'll take the car. And he takes the car anyway. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> this seems like the type of movie that people would think up the day before you know, after smoking a bunch of weed with each other, you know, these two guys like talking back and forth, oh my God, wouldn't it be funny if this happened? And then the other guy goes, oh my God, no, this should happen and then this should happen. And then the other guy goes, oh, yeah, bro, that sounds funny. And then they just immediately start making the movie without thinking about the plot or anything else because it would be funny and weird. <laughs> I'm super excited to be working with Shudder again because they're the best streaming service for all things horror and thriller. With Shudder, you can stream supernatural, thriller, horror movies, and TV shows across all your favorite devices. Shudder's streaming library has just about everything you can ask for, from original movies like VHS 94, The Boy Behind the Door, and PG Psycho Gorman, to the hit series Creep Show by executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. If you're a fan of old classics like Halloween or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or you're just looking for the next classic, you're going to love Shudder's collection. And the best part is they've got the best Nicolas Cage movies around. Mandy, Color Out of Space, The Wicker Man. And they also have the movie that I'm reviewing today, Prisoners of the Ghostland. Shudder has just released an exclusive documentary called Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched. It's the ultimate history of the folk horror genre. Shudder is commercial free and available for just $5.99 a month. I personally use Shudder all the time and you can use it on any device that you want, whether it be an iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Xbox One, Amazon Fire TV, basically anything. If you're new to Shudder, then here's five movies that I recommend you watch. The Dark and the Wicked, Psycho Gorman, The Amusement Park, The Wailing, and The Queen of Black Magic. And of course, all the Nicolas Cage movies because of Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Try Shutter for free for 30 days by going to Shutter.com and use promo code Elvis the Alien. Thank you so much to Shutter for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. Now back to the review. So Nick comes across some strange people blocking the road and attempts to drive his car into them and ends up crashing it. He's then taken to some strange encampment called the Ghostland that we saw Bernice at earlier. And there are a lot of strange people here. There's some in mannequin masks, others wrapped in plastic. A lot of them are chanting random bullshit. Maybe someday, oh. these there's a massive clock atop some stairs and people are pulling a rope that's attached to the second hand. At first I thought this was a symbolic thing, like they were trying to stop time. But if you think about it, that doesn't make much sense because these people hate their lives. This is an awful place to live. It's revealed at the end of the movie that if they let the second hand complete the minute, then a big explosion happens. 
and it like destroys their home. So they're trying to stop that from happening. It's very random. It has very little to do with the overarching plot. It was basically just meant to be like the cherry on top of the climax that is killing the governor at the end. Like, oh look, everything exploding and we can finally get back to our normal lives. This movie is not very clear with what's going on in the world. It kind of just strings you along in hopes that you understand what's happening. We're introduced to this guy named Enoch, and he's the leader of the ghost land, I guess. He like reads them sermons and stuff, but he does very little in the movie. He just kind of exists to exist. Someone that actually does kind of do something is Ratman. You see this crazy guy dressed up in a very strange outfit. His name's Ratman, and he's the leader of the Rat Clan, which is basically just like a bunch of weirdos. The post-apocalyptic version of those cyber goths under the bridge, basically. Nick Cage thinks that they mean to harm him, and he defends himself by saying, I'll karate chop you. I fucking you! Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Very nice. Eventually, Nick tells them why he's there. One of the onlookers yells out that Bernice is one of the mannequins. So Nick starts uncovering their faces one by one, and eventually he finds her. She's been here for a while and her mind's all messed up, so she's having a hard time saying anything. Talk! She cannot! Prison has taken something from us all. And Nick is like, let's go, come on. And oh my God, the pacing in this movie move slower than molasses. It's painful. Watching a movie should be fun, right? And based on what I'm telling you, this movie sounds fun. But if you sit down to actually watch it, it's a slog. It moves so slow. See, on Sono definitely wanted the viewers to absorb every inch of this world, and I appreciate that, but a lot of this just felt like being weird for the sake of being weird, without any sort of emotional depth or consequence, and the dialogue is mostly nonsensical mumbo jumbo. The characters are very hard to invest yourself in. Nicolas Cage is kind of a disgusting bastard in this movie. He has very few redeeming qualities, and the viewer doesn't really care about this woman escaping her imprisonment with the governor because we didn't get to see what happened to her with the governor. We're just immediately shown her running away. What is she running from? Oh, the governor. But why? Oh, we're, we just have to kind of make that up in our minds. Okay. <laughs> ah! Ah! Why are you running? I believe that he mistreats people, but it would be a lot more effective if you showed him doing that, but they don't. In fact, he's kind of like this jolly goofball most of the time. I kind of like him more than Nicolas Cage in this movie, if I'm being honest. There is this one scene of him ordering Yasujiro to behead this woman that was helping his granddaughter escape. But that's it. That's all we get to lean on as far as like the governor being this evil guy. You know, he's, he's so mean. He's such a cruel person. I'm also not too sure how I feel about a movie that tries to make every character weirder and more outlandish than Nicolas Cage. Like, that is his thing. Nicolas Cage is supposed to be the crazy guy that goes over the top and makes scenes really fun. He does that a couple times in this movie, but most of the time he's kind of just watching other people be weird. This movie kind of felt like attending Burning Man, but less fun. This may be the first film that Sono has shot predominantly in English, and the first film that Cage has shot with a predominantly Japanese crew. And you can tell they're both trying to put their best foot forward in this movie, but the writing is so egregious that it all just ends up falling apart. Later, there's a really weird scene when Nick is trying to bring Bernice back to the governor, and he's forcibly removing the mannequin pieces off of her body, all the while repeating, take it off, take it off, take it off, over and over, and every single time Time he says it, he gets a little bit more aggressive. It's really, really weird. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. He then pours water into her mouth and he gets aroused when he does this. Oh God, it's so creepy. <laughs> oh yeah. And subsequently he gets one of his balls blown off. <laughs> So one of the creepiest scenes ends up being one of the funniest. You even get to watch him hold up his bloody testicle <laughs> before passing out. Shiro Aka. It's pretty wild. We're then shown a flashback of what really happened in the bank. Law enforcement show up, shoot and arrest his partner as Nick runs away. A girl in the background is shot in the crossfire. And this young girl is Bernice. And we get to see the scar on her leg and it's like, oh my God, these guys, they had an effect on her when she was very young. Okay. 
So what? Does she remember Nicolas Cage running out of the prison? Does that mean anything? Who cares? It doesn't impact the plot at all. She doesn't make a decision later on because of what happened. She doesn't dislike Nick Cage more because of what happened. This doesn't impact the plot later. It's just a random event to like connect the character somehow. They could have shown us a scene of her remembering this event and then because of it, hating Nicolas Cage and wanting to distance herself from him, making his job more difficult. But instead they use it as a way for Nicholas to be like, oh my God, she got shot in the leg because of me. Oh no, maybe I'm not a good guy after all. <laughs> Duh, like that wasn't completely obvious. The most irritating scene in this entire movie by far is when a bunch of people in the ghost land spew out a shit ton of expository dialogue to Nicolas Cage about what led them to where they are now. Some cool visuals aside, this is a very, very, very boring way to show us the backstory. I guess they didn't have the budget to just film these scenes and instead resort to some dancing and sliding pictures out of a large frame. It's so uninspired and just lazy. The people that stopped Nicolas Cage and Bernice from leaving and then led to them arriving at the ghost land was because of these random ghosts. They like chill out on the highway and don't let people leave. Basically a truck filled with molten sludge crashed into a transport vehicle holding convicted felons. One of which was Nicolas Cage's partner Psycho. So then they all burned to death and died and turned into ghosts, forcing them to guard this bit of road and prevent people from crossing, I guess. Not sure why, I guess it's because of the molten sludge. The molten sludge turned them into ghosts. The plot in this movie is extremely threadbare. They kind of just throw stuff at you and they're like, yeah, it's just the way it is. There's some random ghosts guarding the road. We think this is why, but we're not too sure. Obviously, Nicolas Cage's character is kind of a weirdo and a pervert. Take it off. But regardless of that, Bernice saves his life by speaking her name into the device on his wrist. Maybe she doesn't want to be alone or something? She knows this guy's mission is to bring her back to her abusive grandfather, right? Just leave. Go back to the ghost land or something. Wrap yourself up in mannequin stuff if that's what you want to do, but... I don't think you want to be with this guy. <laughs> they were attacked by these highway ghosts, so maybe that spooked her into wanting Nicolas Cage's help. But if I were her, and he was being very creepy and like forced my clothes off, I would probably just leave him there and just run away. But she doesn't do that because, I mean, we need Nick Cage. He's the hero after all. Remember on IMDb? That's what he's listed as, hero. There's another part where like Nicolas Cage is explaining that he was given more life or something. He like saw these kids looking down on him. Maybe that's why he didn't die when his testicle blew off. <sighs> trying to explain this movie is like trying to make a peanut butter sandwich with just your fingertips. No knife, you gotta spread that shit with your... <laughs> You know, it's very awkward and it doesn't lead to a good result. So I'm sorry, you might have to look up the wiki for this movie or something. And sometimes content can be kind of confusing on purpose and it makes it more intriguing and you look into it a little bit deeper and it gets cooler and you like it more. Like the game Bloodborne, for example, its lore is kind of hidden. But on top of the lore is a really, really fun game. And you only want to dive into the lore after the game has hooked you. So it works really well in that instance. Charlie Kaufman makes a lot of movies that are extremely confusing, but he does this on purpose. He makes the plot ambiguous because he's tackling ideas that are very hard to capture on film. Such movies like I'm Thinking of Ending Things or Synecdoche, New York. God, they're so good. They're so good. You guys, you must see them if you haven't seen them. Basically what I'm trying to say is when a plot is unclear, that doesn't necessarily mean the movie is bad. But in this movie's case, it just feels like the writers were just too lazy to make a full-fledged movie. There's a cool action scene when Yasujiro fights creeps with swords. He's meant to be the quiet and sullen henchman that works for the big baddie. And ultimately he turns on him because on the inside, he's still good. You know that trope. <laughs> this entire movie takes place on like three sets. And if that's all they had to work with, then I think they pulled off some pretty cool scenes. Technically speaking, this movie is made well. It's the directionless narrative, meandering pace, and the lack of any emotional depth that made this movie a chore to sit through. Even when Nick Cage is screaming testicle. Testicle! 
I found it difficult to care. A seven-year-old could think of a more cohesive story. Half the screenplay is people screaming random bullshit, or they're singing, chanting, dancing, but it's all meaningless. Nothing seems organic. It's like attending a post-apocalyptic party where everybody's dressed up and drunk and saying random dumb shit. Eventually, Nick Cage and the rest of the Ghostlanders face the ghost together. Nick puts on a busted football helmet, only to remove it when he's facing the ghosts. So I'm not sure what the point of it was. Nick then realizes that one of the burnt ghosts is his old partner, Psycho. They have a conversation and the ghosts let them pass so they can face the governor. Okay, so what was the point of the ghost then? Seriously, what was the point? They literally only served as a disruption to the plot. That's it, you know? Like, oh shit, we can't get past the ghosts. What are we gonna do? I can't bring her back because of these random ghosts that are in the way. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, let me just walk up and talk to one of them. It was just a misunderstanding, you know? Oh, now the ghost can let me pass. That's cool. <laughs> See ya. If they removed the ghost completely and the character Psycho and just had Nicolas Cage rob this bank on his own, I think the movie would have been a lot better. In that case, they probably would have had to add some stuff to the plot. I get that there should be some disruptions along the road. Obviously, the movie would be really dumb if Nick just went to get Bernice and brought her back and that was the entire movie. I just thought the ghosts were kind of stupid and they took away from what could have been a pretty fun movie. So yeah, they arrive back at Samurai Town. The governor has a key around his neck and Nicolas Cage can use the key to take his suit off, you know, deactivate it. Give me the key. Wouldn't give you a drop of my piss, you degenerate. Bernice's friend Susie jumps on a Gatling gun and starts blasting. <laughs> Started blasting, bam, wow. bam. Then there's a part when Nicolas Cage is facing all these cowboys with guns. Like a gentleman, Nicolas Cage puts a knife to Bernice's throat. So they just shoot Bernice. And when she's on the ground, they don't shoot Nick. They kind of just sit there until he gets his hands on someone else. Miraculously, Nick Cage takes on all of these cowboys with guns by himself. Yasujiro helps Bernice escape a bunch of samurai. Guess what, guys? I bet you didn't know this. Bernice is a master with a blade. It comes out of nowhere and it makes no sense. But yeah, she just starts killing a bunch of the governor's men. <laughs> Nick Cage is killing people left and right with his arm blade thing. It is kind of a fun scene. There's some good fight choreography here and there, but the scene overall is so unbelievable that it just ruins it. In my mind, this feels more like a LARPing event where it's Nicolas Cage's birthday and they want him to win, you know? If Nick is out in the open, don't shoot him. Just, just kind of play along and let him kill you. We don't want to upset the hero on his birthday. <laughs> This movie has zero authenticity. So then Nicolas Cage starts fighting Yasujiro. Yeah, Yasujiro, the master samurai that took on a bunch of people multiple times in this movie. Nicolas Cage defeats him with his arm blade because Nicolas Cage can defeat this master samurai. Like what? What? <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> So Bernice shoots and kills the governor. Upon hearing the governor is dead, the ghost landers celebrate and finally release the hands of the clock, allowing their home to explode because they can now return to civilization. At least I think that's what happened. Did the governor put that clock there? I don't know. He might've. <laughs> At least the governor has red gloves and an all white suit. It's symbolism. He has blood on his hands. Hmm? Very clever. <laughs> So yeah, if you're looking for some fun, interesting set pieces, cool visuals, and a few decent action scenes, then you might like this movie. If you like a good story, then avoid this movie at all costs. It's awful. Anything you want to say, Nick? Oh, was I meant to be watching that? I've been playing Candy Crush the whole time. That's what I thought. Okay. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to watch a good recent Nicolas Cage movie, then you should seek out the movie's Pig. Color Out of Space, and Mandy. Pig is the best out of the three. Mandy is pretty dark and brooding, but also a really good movie. Color Out of Space has some flaws, but it's really fun. I made a review on all three of those movies, so you guys should know about them already if you watched my video. <laughs> Hit the like buttons, test the cool. Let me know in the comments what you'd like me to review next, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>